Upton? Okay, well, cool. That has been so, fixed. Thanks. So we're missing your lovely intro, but at least we'll capture the rest of the content. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I can remake the intro and just re-edit at the beginning. Uh, we'll figure something out. Anywho, okie doke. Thanks, Kirsty, for that point. That's a good reminder. Okay, so uh, in terms of uh, organizational updates, uh, so we have coming in the fall uh, steering group election. And so we'll have more information coming up later during the summer about uh, how to submit self-domination and about how we're going to go about this, uh, about uh, regarding the election process. And there will be one position available. So pretty much just stay tuned. So more information is coming. Uh, what has happened recently? Well, we've had quite a few BEPs that have been merged into the specification. So the BEP01 for quantitative MRI, uh, and then uh, BEP05 for arterial spin labeling, and BEP09 for PET imaging. So uh, congrats to all the people involved. Uh, that has been a lot of work, and it was really, really great to see all those things just uh, make the specification grow bigger. Uh, we have put out a bids adoption survey to see how uh, the sort of the community of users is evolving. Uh, I hope that someone can copy paste that and put that in the chat because I won't be able to do that right now uh, and we'll be spreading the survey through other means anyway. And then we have an open call um, for interested community members who would like to join the maintenance group. Um, and the idea around this is that, I mean, it's definitely an opportunity to sort of contribute or lead technical discussion to, it could be about community development or outreach uh, initiatives. So there are many aspects in which you can help uh, the maintainers group. And uh, Franklin and I were talking a little bit about this meeting and um, sort of said that, I said that maybe I could talk just briefly before we move on into the BEP about how it felt to join the maintainers group because I've been sort of the, the last addition to that group. So I can give you sort of uh, sort of an insider's perspective, a very quick one about how it felt. Um, so I'll, I'll try to summarize very quickly. Um, the idea is that I sort of joined because I've been active in the, the specification a bit uh, and I was invited to join. And at first I was like, okay, what am I doing here? Um, and so my first impression was like, uh, assumption was that I, I needed to know everything about bids, how like all the different tools, or I need to know each line of the specification by heart to actually just be a useful maintainer. And I said, I sort of learned very quickly that this is not at all how it works. And each of the maintainer has their area of specialty and there is some overlap, but it, there is no one knows everything about this. Uh, and the idea is that by working as a team, we try to cover each other's blind spots and that we try to just, um, so we try to constantly like help each other and cross check on each other. So it's definitely one, not one thing where you'll be completely alone or where you have to know everything. You will learn, but it's not one something where you need to know everything about bids um, to actually help uh, make a contribution or be part of the maintainers group. So yeah, I just wanted to sort of have that out there. Um, we could go back and talk about all of this uh, later on, but I think uh, we want to move on. So we're going to start with uh, our first BEP report on BEP02, uh, which is the bid stats model. And I think that for this, we'll have Chris to talk about it. Sure. Uh, everybody can you hear me? Yep. Can hear you well. So yeah, uh, BEP02 has been around uh, for a few years now to have a um, uh, implementation dependent representation of uh, GLMs. And this, uh, I guess this May, we had a workshop to kind of finalize it. And the goal there was to consolidate current practice and build some uh, example models to help uh, show people that it's ready for use. Uh, in the process, we found that it, there were some missing things. And so we had to do a bit of reworking, but uh, it's now, we think, in very good shape. We've released a release candidate um it just like a week or two ago and so uh, people are welcome to go review it uh and we've started a model zoo uh on the bid standard github organization where people can submit models that they think are useful or um interesting there and right now i think we have a couple pull requests nothing's actually been merged um 
Uh, those are the main things that I'd say worth uh, discussing here. Okie dokie. Thank you, Chris. So then we'll be moving on to uh, BEP04, so which is uh, the susceptibility weighted imaging. Uh, and well, yeah, that's the current, pretty much you can read the slide by yourself, but that's pretty much the current status of that one that uh, we are looking for new leadership on for that BEP. Uh, so if you know, or if you, or if you know someone who could actually be uh, like good candidate for this, please definitely do get in touch. That will definitely be helpful. Uh, then we have BEP 11, structural preprocessing derivatives. And who do we have to talk about this? I'll talk about this one in the next one uh, okay, as cool. well. Uh, so these are, so about last year we merged common derivatives, uh, which are just basic principles for you have a file, you do some simple pre-processing on it, and how do you uh, name the outputs? And then there are other ones where you're actually generating new kinds of data. So for the canonical one, I think here, and structural pre-processing are uh, surfaces, so meshes. And so that is um, that is an open pull request uh, there for commenting on. Um, the main blocker on this, and it's going to be the same for uh, BEP12, is that we haven't fully implemented common derivatives in PyBids and in the bids validator. And so it seems a bit premature to push on this until we have a bit more technical uh, infrastructure in place. Yep. OK, so while I have you on stage, I guess you're on that one as well, Chris, right? Yes, so the exact FMI same thing. Yeah. And now the outputs are functional instead of uh, structural and so these are derivative images and then a pretty extensive discussion of uh, what kinds of time series might be the result of functional preprocessing. Okie dokie. All right, so I'll be moving on to the next one, uh, which is about uh, spaces and mapping. So I think if I'm correct, uh, Oscar is not here to talk about it. So pretty much, yeah, so the summary for that one is yeah, the, the progress on this one has been slow, but it's still act there should be more activity uh, on this in the coming month. And the main sort of highlight to report is that the night transform uh, part of this BEP, so that's been integrated into the workflow of fMRI prep. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much uh, what's up for BEP 14. We move on to BEP 16 for diffusion weighted imaging derivatives. Uh, Franco, I think you're the one to talk about this, am I right? Or not? Can you guys hear me now? Great, yes. excellent. Uh, hi, Franco here. Uh, yes, we've been uh, working on these at different levels. This is the minimal amount of work we actually have done on the on the BEP online, so we merged um, um, the model description, so the, the diffusion models, we need to do some extra work to comply with the issue there. And uh, we have been working toward integrating a series of BEPs that will bring us from diffusion weighted imaging to tractography, tractometry, but also connectivity bringing all the way to networks. Uh, hopefully that will come through in the next couple of years if everything goes well. Uh, in parallel, as part of this um, effort, we also started a discussion involving most of the major software developer in tractography and diffusion imaging, which is the idea of building a tractography file format. We have a draft and uh, we, are, we, we have a draft in, pilot, in Python that um, uh, Francois Renault has, has made and we're waiting for a C++ version of the Python, and then we will do some work. This is pretty critical. Otherwise, we might need to cover in bits multiple file formats, something like three or four at least. And uh, we felt that was something we needed to do as part of this. OK, good to know. Definitely, yeah, fewer file formats will actually be helpful, definitely. OK, OK. All right, bid 17. Uh, so. Is Eugene in the crowd? Because if he's not, I've been told that I should be the one presenting the slide. Uh, OK. Uh, so generic bids uh, connectivity data schema. So um, that's, uh, you literally have a link to uh, one of the, to the, to, BEP, to the BEP here, to the current state. Uh, so it's intended to be sort of a meeting point for harmonization of connectivity-based formats across modalities. Uh, and there's been a meeting late 2020 
uh, with Franco, Chris, Sebastian uh, from Pinets and about pushing like for uh, this kind of integration. Uh, yeah, the challenges sort of are several, but they are sort of different data requirements for different types of connectivity. Uh, and you, so you, you pretty much need good basic use case uh, that span like several modalities to sort of actually make progress there. Uh, so yeah, in general, uh, people I think are on this BEP are keen to hear more from uh, other defining connectivity based formats so that they can sort of make, I think, good progress and make sure that it's not, I guess, too tailored to too specific a use case in general. Okie doke. All right, uh, that one is for me as well. Uh, for eye tracking, gaze, posi gaze position, and pupil size, um, uh, so led by Dejan. Um, so the 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 the, uh, the current bed lead is looking for another bed lead to help finish the the work and making uh, incorporate it into the standard. Um, so once again, if you know about eye tracking and want to sort of help uh, the BIS community with this, just or if you know someone who fits that description, do not hesitate to get in touch. Uh, and you would you would not be starting from scratch. There's clearly uh, so the this BEP is in a in a in a Google Doc at the moment, and there's clearly a lot of things there. Uh, so there's definitely the idea to sort of uh, start working from what has already been done, which is already quite a lot, and try to uh, sort of uh, keep moving that ball forward. Okay. Uh, and then on 21 for common electrophysiolog electrophysiological derivatives, who is here? Oh, no, I think you're here to talk about this. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, so we have many leads, and, and actually Cyril and, and Robert are here as well. And I think our update is, so we had a poster at Cutting EEG uh, about a year ago where Chris presented, um, we had a survey that MANAC organized and uh, what people wanted in the bits derivative. And I think the most important were annotation, process data, epoch data, and head model and midfield matrices. And in terms of our uh, progress, we haven't made very pro much progress. Um, there is an effort by uh, Robert on the data set for infant study. Uh, we also have EPOC data set we want to release, and mainly because we can't have access to the raw data. And uh, it's an important data set that's uh, widely used in the community. And then there is also, uh, we have at UCSD a collaboration with the Chan Mine Institute. So there are large uh, bits data set already organized for fMRI, but not yet for EEG and for EEG. We want to see if we can include the, the main, uh, the head models. Also, there's been an effort for in brain life to integrate the bits uh, pipeline for EEG and uh, for both uh, field trip, EEG lab, m &E, and we think something can come out once the data come out of the pipeline, we all need something to uh, store that data. So I think we'll have more to report to the next meeting. Yep, okay. Yeah, it really sounds like when you have a common need, then it sort of like helps push the thing forward, definitely, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, it is good, good to know, cool. Also feels that derivatives is always like, the getting the stuff for the raw data is complicated but as you know you start tackling derivatives it's like you want to pull your hair out so it becomes a lot more complicated so it's definitely a lot of effort there that's really really good okay 22 for magnetic resonance spectroscopy who is here i can't see uh, that's me here go for it all right um so this effort for um getting a beds uh, or bet for mrs actually um, started off with uh, developing a nifty format for MRS as for long, to, well, there wasn't one before. So that was a, it's obviously a related uh, complementary to the bids uh, standard. So we've um, uh, presented an abstract on this advice from Aaron. Uh, the manuscript is in preparation. Um, all the discussion about this particular aspect is on the MRS forum, which uh, the link is there. And now that that's finalized, we can now update our pretty outdated um, MRS BEP, which is also on the Google Doc, but discussions are currently ongoing on the MRS Hub Forum. And uh, if, you know, if there's people out there who would like to contribute, we definitely would like um, other people uh, aside from ourselves to, to contribute for sure. Cool. 
Thank you. I think I think I'm always amazed when I like when I realize that it's um, getting things into bits. Sometimes just requires just even defining the format itself. Yeah. And some 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 of us in other fields or other modalities don't even realize this. And it's like, oh yeah, yeah, we have this like standard format that we use, and so that's, it seems easy for us. And it's like, oh no, <laughs> not that easy in all cases. That's yeah. Yeah, amazing. Okie doke. Thank you, Mark. All right. Um, did I skip one? No, I didn't. Uh, for pet pre-processing derivatives, uh, Martin, are you the one on duty for this one? Yes, I will be uh, going through this one. Okay. Um, yeah, so first, uh, good to see you all. Um, so yeah, I just want to quickly go through um, some of the efforts uh, that are going on now that we have uh, finished uh, the pet bits specification. Uh, and actually we started on the pre-processing derivatives for pet uh, several years ago, but it was way too premature. Uh, but now, so we're starting to, to go from that as well. Uh, and in August, September, uh, we will try to coordinate a meeting uh, with several uh, different people from different uh, centers uh, where we will try to, you know, like map everything that needs to get done. Uh, so uh, we need to make sure that we capture all the various experimental designs uh, and also the different needs for uh, pre-processing and pharmacokinetic modeling. Uh, so we want to bring in groups that have done dopamine, serotonin, uh, trying to, you know, like capture as much information as possible. Uh, and we've already really been in contact with a few sites that have kind of mapped out uh, what they needed for their type of experimental design in terms of pre-processing. Um, and with that being said, uh, we still need to be uh, very much aligned with uh, the derivatives for other um, uh, yeah, types of imaging, especially MRI, because um, you see more and more that we're doing these combined PET-MR acquisitions where we both do structural functional ASL uh, we want to combine also pharmacological studies in the future. So it's important that we try to already at this stage, try to align uh, the efforts. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it for me. Yep. I also find it really admirable that you've just had this like BEP uh, for PET merged. And I was like, you're already thinking about the next step. It's like, yeah, did you take like even a break? <laughs> Maybe like two well, months, a weekend, away. and then you moved on? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> That's crazy. Well done. Amazing. Okay. Thank you, Martin. Uh, okay. For BEP24, that's me uh, for uh, computer tomography scans, for CT scans. So, um, so the idea for, for, for this BEP is that uh, it is partly arising from the need of some people to actually have uh, a way to standardize their data, but they're definitely looking for people with um, more domain expertise uh, for uh, feedback on this. So definitely looking for, uh, yes, more like specialists on who could actually help with this one. So it's still at, uh, at a fairly early stage. So if you're anyone, if you know anyone who uh, knows something about CT and like would like to help with this, just once again, just uh, do not hesitate to just send their names in our general direction. We'll be happy to sort of, um, the, we'll be happy to just make sure that they, it gets forwarded to the right person. Okie doke. 25 for MIDS for medical imaging data structure. So, hi, uh, good evening. Go for it. Um, let's start talking about the updates of BITS 25. Firstly, we have been working on a paper, on this paper, and currently it's uh, awaiting review. Also, when it's done, it it will be published at Journal of Biomedical uh, Semantics. Uh, secondly, we have implemented uh, two databases with the structure of MITS. Uh, one of them is related to the COVID-19 positive cases since the pandemic started. And uh, the other database uh, is in the same period, but with negative cases. Uh, for further information, you can check the links below. Uh, finally, uh, the data set of COVID-19 positive uh, cases has been included along other data sets in a Kaggle challenge uh, for detection of this illness. This is an ongoing challenge. Uh, besides, you can see the status of this challenge or download data on the link. 
Uh, on the other hand, uh, due to projects that need to be completed with priority, the XNAT to meet code is on, on a standby for the update of new features. Uh, and this is the last updates of BEP25. Uh, thanks for attending, uh, attending me. Thank you for this, Jose. That was that was nice. I think I, I like the fact that uh, yeah, when you sort of have data set that you need to sort of put into that data structure, it really helps making things a lot a lot clearer in many cases. I've seen that in some of other BEPs as well. That definitely just makes things more concrete about how you want to organize things. Good. Okay, 26 for microelectrode recording. So that one is for me. So uh, definitely this BEP is also looking for a new uh, leadership, but uh, many of the points in that BEP do relate to BEP 32. That's about animal electrophysiology that we'll be talking about a bit later. So there are definitely sort of uh, overlaps there um, between different BEPs. Okay, for 27 for BITS application 2.0. I'll, uh, I'll take this one. Go ahead, Greg. Cool. So um, many of you are familiar with the original bids app uh, spec and paper that came out in 2017, which pretty much said, if you want to make a bids application, um, you have to accept you know, a data set, an output path, an analysis level, and then there are some optional flags. Um, so one of the problems is that everything beyond the very specific set of things that were uh, defined was the Wild West. There was no standardization or way to kind of understand what would be the case from one tool to another. Um, so we're uh, essentially re-engineering uh, re the spec to be based upon boutiques. Um, and there's going to be rules for how different um, you know, parameters are implemented. But ultimately, it gives much more flexibility up to the developer to do whatever they want to do with their tool, as long as they describe it in a standardized way so that we can look at these descriptors and understand how to interpret them in a, big, in a bids context, whether it's relating to entities or what have you. Um, so the spec's ongoing. We made a lot of progress in actually last week as a hackathon project, um, and I'm sure we'll be continuing to hammer on it over the course of the um, of the conference. So um, yeah, feedback is is always welcome, um, and uh, I should have put a link in there, but I, I can add one later. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Greg, with this. Um, okay, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that the slides will be available at the end of the meeting. So in case you don't, don't try to just type those links that might appear just frantically on your computer that will, no need to do that, we'll, we'll send the slides around. Now I'll just, uh, well, well, sorry to interrupt you, Remy. Um, I just wanted to draw people to this, like some really great conversations going on in the chat and that's fantastic. Please do keep using, using the chat. Remy can't see it because he's, he's coordinating everything but there's also the Q&A tab. And so anyone that's watching, if there's a question that you don't want to get like lost in the chat, please put it in the Q&A and then we'll be able to come back to them. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Kirsty, for that. Uh, okay, BEP28 for provenance. I think it's Satra, you are taking this one, am I right? Yes. Okay, uh, there's been progress at the hackathon recently, I heard. There's been progress at the hackathon. Uh, a lot of things are coming along. This is a complicated BEP in the sense it's trying to cover every transformation within the bid specification. And we are trying our darn best to keep it as simple as possible, which is not always an easy task. Uh, I think there's been a lot of progress. We are trying to capture everything from complex workflows to simple Docker runs and other things. We welcome different use cases and examples uh, from the community to come to us and say, this is what we would need provenance for. And that might help us kind of think about trimming down some of the complexity to focus on those use cases. Uh, provenance covers a lot, large amount of space. There are examples already at the Git repo. There is a PR and a Google doc that where we're discussing things. Uh, and the one thing I will say is together with uh, the Nidium Terms project and Michael Dion, one of the things we're trying to do is to describe the entities that span across bids. And this is related to the bids entities project itself, uh, which Taylor has taken on on his shoulders. Um, and we're hoping that this gets extended to the broad range of derivatives as well. So I'll stop there. OK. Thanks for that update. Yes, uh, I think we, we can talk later uh, maybe about all the work that Taylor has been doing on, on that because there's that's uh, very a lot of a lot of effort has been going in that area and uh, sort of in the entity definition as well, definitely. 
Okay, BEP29 for virtual and physical motion data. Who's hey, on? hi. Hello. Um, yeah, so um, it's motion um, since the last meeting in late March with the uh, steering committee, um, nothing much has changed. Um, so we still have a few open points that are being discussed, some more central and some a little less urgent. But the biggest um, two open points are whether we want to have um, all tracking systems in one JSON file as like a comprehensive list for people who use a mixture of different motion capture systems, or we just um, keep separate JSON files for each data file. And another open point is whether we want to support quaternions to represent um, rotations in addition to Euler angles, because um, this might reduce the risk of data distortion that's coming from um, converting quaternion angles to Euler. And, and it's relatively little effort to um, add quaternions as part of the specification, but um, yeah, this is still in discussion and we are working on example data sets um, to compare between the options. Yeah, so that's where we are at. Okay, thanks for that. Um, I'm just thought that also, uh, I guess it's obvious to many here, but in case you have some expertise and you're not part of that BEP uh, and you might have answers on how to solve those problems, do not hesitate to get in touch with people from other BEPs to help each other. I mean, that's also part of what BIDS is, right? Um, okay, for BEP30, near infrared spectroscopy, Robert, you are here to talk about this? Uh, uh, it's actually Luca, Robert. Oh, is sorry, not sorry, Lu sorry, Luca, go for it. No worries, no worries at all. Uh, so the uh, the goal of this web is to uh, make the uh, SNRF uh, uh, data format, which is the official uh, data format of the Society for FNIRS as part of the BID specification. We recently met uh, with the steering committee and we transitioned from the Google Doc to the, uh, to the markdown file. Uh, so here's the link to the pull request. Um, as, as many of you know, and many of the audience knows, of course, that the primary uh, technology for, for NIRS is a continuous wave uh, FNIRS. And we are trying to, uh, to build a very, very solid uh, proposal around that. But we don't want to exclude also the time domain and the frequency domain FNIRS from this specification. We want to make it extendable accessible to these modalities as well. We are reaching out to specific experts in these two uh, um, lesser frequent modalities to make sure that uh, we're all on the same page and we don't conflict uh, with each other. Uh, we have examples and the validator which are currently work in progress. That's pretty much it at the end. Okay, thank you, Luca. Yeah, once again, we see that you know, making sure that you cover a, a wide range of use cases is super useful to make sure that you got something that a lot of people can use later on. Okay, for microscopy, I know that Julian is here, but uh, is it Julian? Are you the one talking about it, or is Marie Hélène no, here it's to me. talk about it? Oh, Marie Hélène. Okay, go for it. Ah. <laughs> so, uh, hi everyone. Thank you for uh, this opportunity to share our update. So uh, we started this BEP uh, around this time last year with the uh, goal of integrating 2D and 3D microscopy into BIDS. And we received really great feedback from both the BIDS community and the microscopy uh, community. And we are um, finalizing the proposal and preparing to submit to the specification. So as part of the development of the BEP, uh, we introduced a new sample entity uh, which is used to distinguish different tissue samples from the same subject. And this also led to a more general discussion um, about broadening the specification to other species. And uh, we are uh, currently discussing this in collaboration with uh, Sylvain Takarkar and Julia Springer from the Animal Electrophysiology BP32. So on this subject, we have two uh, pull requests that are open uh, right now for the integration of this uh, sample entity, as well as the related metadata um, in the participant TSV files, but also in a new sample TSV file. So feedback is welcome on both of those PR, of course. And, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are currently finalizing the proposal and um, with the remaining point to address in the next few weeks. 
So we need to uh, confirm uh, accepted uh, file formats uh, and extensions. We also need to clarify the usage of a new stain entity. We want to confirm metadata fields related to image acquisition. And we are also finalizing a transform definition uh, for a new chunk entity, which is a where, where chunk is referring to different fields of view of the same sample. Uh, moreover, we will start to work shortly on extending the bids validator and also generating example data sets. So if you have a microscopy data set and would like to contribute, please uh, reach out to us. So that, that completes our update. Thank you. Thank you, Marie-Hélène. Yes, that's, that's uh, a lot of progress has been done there. Really, really good to see that one moving forward. Okay, and then since you mentioned BEP32 for animal electrophysiology, I think that's our next one. And who, Sylvain, I see you here, or is it Julia who's going to speak about it? And silence responds. Hey, no, sorry. I have to <laughs> activate my mic so that you can hear me. So I'm going to okay. start, and then you like to take over. Uh, so hello. Brilliant. Go for it. <laughs> So uh, yeah, we 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 uh, we we started uh, an attempt to uh, actually uh, put uh, animal electro electrophysiology data into uh, some kind of thing that looks like uh, bids, and then we actually uh, put it together as a as a formal BEP. So the document has been a, has been there for approximately a year. Uh, it's uh, in a fairly okay shape for some use cases, namely uh, in vivo data recorded in uh, in awake animals. Uh, but there's still a lot to do for uh, tons of other use cases, uh, anesthetized uh, in vitro stuff, which is uh, a large and vast mess. So, uh, indeed, what we need at the moment is really uh, people who want to put their uh, electrophysiology data into, uh, into bits so that we can, we can push the BEP in, in different directions and make it uh, more generic and more valid for tons of use cases. So then, so um, Marie-Hélène just uh, said it, and uh, she was actually, uh, BEP31 was the lead on, on, on uh, introducing the sample entity, and, and, but it's directly applicable to, uh, to what we're doing and to, to support uh, animal data in general in, in, in bids. So it's uh, indeed, we, we did discuss. And uh, all, all this initiative is, is part of a, a, a working group uh, that's been, uh, that's supported by the INCF itself. Uh, and we meet uh, regularly. So Yulia is going to take over now. Hello, everyone. So with the de development of the document, we also have uh, uh, already set up a repository that is used for collecting example data sets. And if anybody wants to contribute to their data set to this, we would be happy to, to help converting and integrating it there. Um, we also have a couple of uh, software tools that are co-developing or like integrating with the current uh, BEP. So on the one side, we have uh, uh, an interface with, with probe interface, which is a tool that, that can be used to um, represent the, the physical layout of a probe. And we are planning on integration with a spike interface that is a tool for, for spike sorting that can build on top of the, the proposed structure. Um, also, we have a repository with the name Ando that contains code um, that can be used for supporting the generation of the of the folder and file structure as it is currently proposed for, for um, testing purposes and uh, simple simple validation scripts. Um, currently, we are basing the BEP on to the NWB and Mix file formats for representing or for storing the data. And um, yeah, there we are also working on how how to best do the do the conversion and integrate those. Yeah, because if if electrophysiology only has like two three file formats, right? So that should be fairly easy, right? That was a joke. From what I've been talking with Julia and Sylvain recently, it's a yeah, it's a bit of a a bit of a headache the conversion there. Okay, thank you. I also want to, I mean, I know we've, it's been mentioned twice, but uh, I really I really like how the collaboration between BEP uh, 31 and 32 just came about on that sample entity. I think 
also illustrates well what bids is where people have like shared needs and then eventually they've never worked together and they're like okay fine we'll work together and we'll get get that thing done that's um i think that's one of the nice little bid story from the last few months that makes me happy every time i think about it anyway so bit 33 advanced um um so diffusion weight imaging who is on this for that uh for this one i think that should be me all right uh, am i audible yes we can hear you loud and clear Excellent. Uh, so ADWI bids is uh, an effort to try to address the issue of new uh, encoding methods being used in diffusion weighted imaging. Uh, if we don't record it, then we have no idea what experiment we ran and that's a problem. Uh, and the issue with this is that uh, a typical DWI data set will use many different effective pulse sequences. So we need to record not just the underlying pulse sequence that's common to them, but uh, any variation in a way that doesn't result in us repeating ourselves for every single acquisition, which could be obviously very numerous. So what we've done is developed a uh, event-based model of pulse sequences. And the major issue that we're facing at the moment is uh, in any kind of waveform describing language, you will invariably end up with very dense uh, waveform data that you need to record in a binary format if you want to get any kind of reasonable uh, density in there. So the issue that we're currently having is uh, choosing a suitable binary structured format that we can refer to in an indirected sense uh, by basically other JSON files referring to that binary data in some other file. So that's a bit of an issue and uh, some other expertise would be helpful if anyone has any ideas about how uh, we can store detailed binary data uh, in a more general, in a more generic way than using some weird format that no one else is using. Uh, correspondingly, because every pattern of variation and simple parameters that can be ascribed to them it will be different for every diffusion-weighted imaging sequence, we need to determine which sequences we want to support with priority. But the goal is that it could support any. Uh, we've already generated a bunch of example data sets uh, that show this off using some placeholder formats in terms of uh, how the binary indirections are working. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, the general structure of this BEP is, is actually done. Uh, in principle, you could, you could use it today. Uh, but we also need to work with uh, vendors directly in order to establish how we can actually record this data within the DICOM in order to ensure that it's going to be available uh, in the future going forwards. So. <laughs> That one's, that one's a huge sticking point, and I'm sure it will take us a while to get it sorted, but we're in quite direct talks, so I'm optimistic. Good. But that's all. Thank you. That sounds, that sounds good. That's good. All of that is good to hear. Okay, I think if I'm correct, yes, we are done with the BEP uh, side of today's uh, town hall, of, I mean, this year's town hall. So uh, I'm going to take just a few minutes to talk about some of the community projects we have uh, going on or that we have, we are thinking of uh, working on. Uh, so the bit starter kit for one thing has been um, sort of um, underdeveloped to, uh, I mean, many of us feel that it's been underdeveloped or underused. So there's the idea to move it to, uh, how to a website, uh, quotation marks, either um, based on MKDoc, like the specification, or maybe more like a Jupyter book. Uh, we're not sure exactly which uh, which way or some other possibility. We're not sure exactly in which direction this is going to go. But the idea would be to have something that is a bit more, uh, the information that in, is in the starter kit is a bit more, is it easier to find, uh, easier to navigate um, so that we can make this a, a more useful resources uh, and a more easily findable resource for uh, users, for beginners, uh, for just anyone uh, who is uh, sort of is interested in bids as well in general. Uh, another thing that has started very recently is uh, a YouTube channel uh, um, for by the bids uh, under the bid sort of channel. Um, the idea about, around this was to first sort of start I'd like the lowest hanging fruit was let's start organizing all the videos on YouTube that are bids related or uh, in playlists so that they're centralized and more easily accessible once again. Uh, another thing that um, started doing is actually starting having maybe some quick 
interviews with some people involved in the community. Uh, I've been doing a couple of them with people with the, the different leads of the, the recent BEPs that have been merged. I still have not finished just editing those. I'm, I'm very sorry for the people I have interviewed. It's They will be there uh, very soon. Um, but the idea is also to use this as a platform to uh, show the people in the community and maybe and maybe also create tutorials. So there are many things that could be done with this. And if you have ideas, please do not hesitate to get in touch. Uh, I think there's uh, quite a few things that could be done that way. Uh, and a very quick update on the Bits MATLAB front because I've been working on this a little bit. Uh, so that things have been moving forward uh, there and I think um, I hope that we're close to maybe a candidate release for this uh, and that some of the functionality would be uh, sort of try to catch up with some of the stuff that PyBits can do, for example, that uh, we, I think we need more uh, of in MATLAB and Octave in general. So that's, that's it for the community projects. And I think that in general now we're into community feedback mode. So um, especially because Kirsty said there's a many interesting conversation in happening in uh, the chat. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can actually see the chat too, because now, now I'm really curious and I'm like eager to sort of jump into uh, this as well. All right. There's lots, there's lots of, of really good chat. Thank you so much for taking us through all of that. And I think there's also quite a few, there's quite a few different questions that are sort of in the question and answer, but don't necessarily need to be answered like by the whole team. Um, Cause I think a lot of it is sort of matching people up, but I did just want to get us started with how is MIDS different from BIDS? I thought that was quite, that, that felt like kind of a useful um, answer if anyone's able to, to give that. I think we lost our MIDS yeah. uh, representative. It was it was in the chat actually. The answer was in the chat. It's it basically allows the answer was that it allows um, you to take the sort of concepts of bids and apply it to different parts of the body. So it's sort of like like an extension or like a meta extension um, of bids. But I just I wanted to kind of catch catch that one. I thought it was really um, I think that's a that's an important sort of understanding around like the differences of what we're what we're expanding um, with those extensions. I'm trying to catch up on all the questions. So some of you who've been reading them want to just, just like take over while I just go through the <laughs> go through the backlog, I'd be very happy. So maybe people can just jump in and ask themselves if they find it more useful. I'm all in favor of that too. Definitely a way to do it as well. Hi, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I was typing the question. Anyway, basically, Thanks, Christy, for uh, quickly summarizing that, you know, MIDS is uh, broadening the scope of bits to different organs of the body, but that made me think, you know, are there any features of the bits uh, specification, I mean, the data set that are restricted to the brain? I mean, I can't think of any off the top of my head. I know we are all rooted in neuroscience uh, and stuff, but neuroimaging data, but as, as it is, there is not too much that's really, really tied to the brain, right? And imaging data is just a rectangular gate or another structure form that can be easily translated to various other parts of the body. Or am I missing something here? Anyone wants to jump in that one? You want to go for it, Kirsty? You want to sort of? No, I was just going to say I think it's probably one that's better asked offline because we've we've demoted <laughs> all of the um, extensions. It feels like a, a good answer for the the Beth extension leads to to answer. But does anyone on the does anyone on the steering group want to answer? I think the summary is is pretty is pretty clear. But there's obviously lots of nuances in the actual application as we go through. Yeah, I think maybe we could add one of the one of the discussions we've had, for example, with the microscopy BEB would be the same as for the 
as for, uh, I would say, imaging different body parts, right? So you only have one brain. <laughs> it's quite easy. You'll have multiple sessions for one brain, multiple runs for one brain. But in general, you don't have to deal with the right and left arm. You don't need to deal with different body parts. The whole hierarchy uh, of things is, is, is a little bit easier if you only have one thing that you image. So I, so I think that's also something that they are working on the same way as uh, microscopy pep has been looking at. No, I mean to say that the bits data set specification does not have concepts of left or right or all that, right? It's, it's more about- Exactly. Uh, so I don't see why that can be adapted to other parts of the body. You know, especially if they're imaging data, they're imaging data at the end of the day. I mean, if they're not rectangular grid, then it's a different problem in terms of uh, specifying and whatnot, you know, that are, what do you call spiral grid or something like that. But as long as they're a regular lattice, so to say, I think it should be easy to adapt. I'm just trying to understand uh, the new I, I think really perhaps it's only about the specific, you need to add that to the participants. You cannot, uh, like our regular participant TCV, there is no hierarchy in that besides runs and sessions. So you need to add some kind of physical hierarchy if you want to have the different body parts. And I guess that's what they're working on in the midst. And maybe one of the maintainers knows more about that, but we should uh, contact them. So I think really it's only about, you need to figure out how do you make clear what part, body part it is and, and how you specify that precisely enough. Because for different modalities, they also then call it different, which is great. Yeah, I'd be curious to learn how they're learning from the DICOM effort because I, I'm i guessing DICOM people had to deal with all this because it covers a much broader range of um, um, scanning sessions. Anyway, thank you. Thanks so much. And I think we've got another hand up um, from Anav. I think it was Arno, wasn't it? Arno, oh, sorry. Yeah, there you go. Oh yeah. So yeah, I wanted to one extension I didn't see, and we've been discussing with Robert and others for mobile brain imaging, EEG fMRI, EEG and eye tracking, is synchronization of multiple data streams. And there are solutions in the field, like in the LSL protocol, ping time and events. But I think you know there might be advantages and in PET as well, um, advantages to defining. Uh, a way that you know different data streams can be um, synchronized because this is common to many different fields when you have multimodal data and multimodal data is going to increase. Maybe Robert can comment on that. I think you've already said it quite well as that this is really in different domains that we have been discussing this, like as for example in PET in the blood and but also in EG, which is often combined together with with motion capture data, for example. So I think this is a, a shared concern of multiple open webs at this moment, but also something that we need for uh, data types that are already part of the specification. I'm not, I'm not sure whether we should, whether we should try to make a, a BEP out of this, like a synchronization BEP, or whether we should try to tackle this problem in another way. Uh, but it, 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 it's, it's good to think about this. There is at least an issue on this, isn't there? Open in the, it, that rings a bell. I'll have to look it up. I'll, I'll hush now and I'll uh, go and find the link. Hello, can you hear me? Hi. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I made the question about uh, about the TMS EG uh, data set. So there is me and, and uh, Vittorio, one colleague, who are working on uh, on this. We already contacted uh, Guillaume and also Robert about this, and uh, because we tried to make uh, to make a, a TMS EG bits compliant data set, but we didn't quite succeed. We had to use some bits ignore to to make it compliant. So we were thinking about uh, the brain stimulation the non-invasive brain stimulation part. And we were, we were wondering if either we missed something <laughs> or maybe we just missed the specification for the TMS that already exists, or we should try to start with a new BEP on non-invasive brain stimulation, or, it, it, or this is not, uh, uh, this is not uh, the proper way because brain 
Non-invasive brain stimulation is not an imaging technique, right? So uh, we wonder if we should go for the BEP or we should go for, I don't know, pull the quest and to add some specification in other bit uh, uh, extension or, or something. Thank you. <laughs> Can I comment on this? So I I, I think so. Uh, bits is not only about recording the brain. Bits is about recording the brain in relation to things that are happening because the brain is like wired to process things. Uh, but I I don't necessarily see like non-invasive brain stimulation as being that different from other types of stimulation that you can give to the brain, such as presenting a picture on the screen or playing an audio file. Uh, so I think that this should be further explored in relation to the um description of stimulation and but also this description of, of behavior because i think i think those are the two things where like the brain is in between uh we're primarily focusing on recordings from the brain while we're stimulating and while we're also recording behavior so so here i think that you could try to align it more with more complex um experimental designs where stimulation is more complex than what we're currently representing now, I'm, I'm thinking a little bit in the direction of hierarchical event descriptor tags, which we already have, but possibly it's that that's not enough, or like what what timing is not like so obvious, uh, or what timing is complex. Like if especially if you do like rapid pulse TMS, um, we might want to code a train of pulses rather than each individual pulse. Um, yeah, and anyone then else? also like yeah. all the. Sorry, and also like all, all the, the hardware specification that are that, that that are missing in the current structure. And yeah, it's not just TMS also, like there is, you know, electrical ultrasound and either within TMS, there are like, you know, multiple modalities. So we, we really didn't figure out like how to have but a comprehensive way to describe this. But Remy, can you help me? The, the, we did discuss uh, stimulation equipment uh, like how to document stimulation equipment, how to document stimulation software. It's yeah, but it's like the it's like that deep, right? There's yeah. compared to all the stuff <laughs> yeah, that but, you can add in there. Yeah, but but I th I think that that might be a direction to further explore yeah. uh, in relation to this. Like we have thought about this. Yeah, Kirsty. I'm so sorry. I'm just really con uh, I'm not concerned. That's too strong. I'm aware that we're going to run out of our hour in three minutes. And I think there will be some folks who, um, so we we can stay for a bit longer. So the folks who are here, like you can stay if you want to, but I know the open science room who are hosting us, which is really fantastic. And thank yeah. you so much to all of them who've, who've supported um, bids and supported this town hall. We're really delighted that so many people have come and there are emergent sessions that are happening after this. So I don't want to sort of steal, I don't want to steal people away from, from those just because we're, we have so many, so many things that we could talk about. Um, so I wanna just mostly say that in case some of the folks have to kind of leave, but I also wanted to just check in and celebrate the maintainers because um, it's the maintainers that just do like the huge, huge, huge amounts of work. So if you are at home, <laughs> please like say thank you so much to your, your friendly um, maintainer team because uh, they, yeah, they really sort of, keep keep everyone connected in terms of um, the brain imaging data structure community and I got their names off of that title slide so I didn't forget <laughs> forget them so you've got Stefan uh, Franklin Remy Taylor and Ross and Chris are not here right now but they they were Chris was here and they are just working you know just doing spectacular spectacular amounts of work so thank you to everyone all in the chat that's making me really happy and thank you to, to all of the maintainers um, Stefan, I wanted to just come to you just in case there was anything that you wanted to say about um, from the perspective of the maintainers or any asks to the community that you wanted to, to share. I have not prepared anything specific, but in case, so I see lots of people are watching. So in case you have ever played with the thought of joining the maintainers team, please don't hesitate to reach out and we'll take it from there. A simple email to any of the maintainers is enough. And um, it's not really a high barrier. It's very uh, relaxed usually, and there's no pressure on you, uh, no, no matter what type of commitment you're going to make. 
Thank you so much. And yeah, and then uh, Taylor, I don't know if you want to, because you you were not the newest. Remy, you're the newest, but I don't know, Taylor, if there's anything that you want to to add. No, maybe no, maybe Ross is the Ross. There's so many. There's so many now. Look at this. We're growing, but we need more. There's lots and lots of work. Does anyone want to say anything on like what it's like joining the maintaining? I mean, I've already had a go at, at my perspective at the beginning. So maybe if a Taylor or like someone else wants to just go in. Um, if you want to go for it, Taylor. Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, I'd say that, um, you know, as Remy said, you don't really have to know everything going in. Um, and you can really carve out your own uh, niche to focus on, you know, you don't have to uh, take care of everything. Um, so it, it's really depends on if there's any particular part of the specification you're really passionate about and want to help take care of and, um, you know, maintain like a gardener, um, then I think that would be a great place to start. And if you want to expand beyond that, you can, and if you don't, you don't have to. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I, I just wanted to also sort of, um, so from our perspective on the steering group, uh, Franklin just does like a monster, monster amount of work for us and keeps us all complete. We have time, we have different meeting times every three weeks and we are sort of 99% of the time there and on time. And it's all thanks to Franklin's coordination. And I just wanted to see if Franklin, if you wanted to kind of bring um, a different, a, your perspective on, on being a maintainer, if there's anything that you want to add with me. Yeah, yeah, so I think my role is a little different on the, on the maintainers team than perhaps what most of you all see if you're on the, on the GitHub channels and platforms. Um, so I probably primarily do a lot of the like organizational frameworking and organizational support on the back end, which is still, I think, a really fruitful experience. Like I, I coordinate with all of our BEP leads. So this whole meeting today was a pleasure to be able to put together. And, and I think it's a really exciting experience that I'm the one kind of trying to look around the corner and kind of down the street and figure out where are we going to be going to next, co coordinating all of our different strategies that, that we try to put into, into bids. Um, and I mean, I think it's it's a really valuable experience to to see see that different perspective. Like you don't have to have all the uh, underlying technical principles and to understand all all the different sequences, but there's still contributions that you can make to this fantastic initiative. And there's still things that that you can do. We're always we're always exciting to to reach our hand out. I'm always here to to help support between the the maintainers group, steering group, as Kirsty was saying. Um, and I I mean I, and I really do think it is a valuable experience that you get you also get to see the entire uh ecosystem from bid so i get to see all the little little parts and and it's definitely and it's uh it's definitely been a fantastic experience to be able to be part of bids for i guess three plus years now yeah thank you so much so that's like the main main thing is just a huge great big huge thank you so much to the to the maintainers um we're sort of officially over time, and so some people, some people actually, Kirsty, Stefan that, said that, yeah, no, so Stefan told us that there is no session, emergent session scheduled after us. So if there are any lingering questions, we can take them now. I'm so sorry, fantastic, yeah, so yeah, so we we are here, and um, yeah, we can absolutely take, take some more questions. Um, Sebastian, is that the Sebastian? I think that's a new hand. Like yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, hello, Hall. Um, uh, just like a small uh, question about uh, it's kind of a long time I was raising. There was like this discussion about atlases in bits, and there was this uh, keyword uh, about atlas, and then you get you give like different atlases, and I think like like in brain imaging and especially in derivatives when we go to connectivity. Uh, we might be very interested in, um, in uh, I would say, differentiating uh, different uh, atlases uh, outputs. And so I was raising like kind of the question about this atlas keyword in the bits, uh, I would say, um, specification. Uh, and then actually, in somehow, it seems still in the bits validator, for instance, when you use the atlas keywords, it's still somewhere there. But when 
you try to get some documentation more on the bits and in the forum, there is nothing more related to the Atlas keyword and anything. So I was wondering if there is like more work on this or if we should kind of make these things back to the discussion. And I will be happy to, you know, to make this discussion again. Um, so I don't know if you are aware about this. Uh... I don't know exactly what kind of atlases or what kind of metadata fields you are talking about. So if you have the name of the fields, the metadata fields also, and could post it in the chat, that would be helpful. Um, otherwise, I think I'm confusing yeah. this with the cognitive yeah. atlas where you can have the keywords and then some description of what's happening. Yeah, or so the coordinate systems. So, so here, what, what I mean is like, so one part is like when you get, for instance, segmentation, the DSEG, then you can get in the JSON metadata in somehow from which Atlas is coming from. But then, uh, for instance, if you are, I would say, parasiting the brain uh, cortical uh, surface uh, using different atlases and you get different outputs, then you, you need to disengage them. And so uh, the idea will be more to have kind of an atlas dash, uh, I will say label in the file name. Uh, that was kind of introduced at the beginning with uh, fMRI prep, if I'm not wrong. And that, that kind of disappeared in the discussion, but it's still like kind of still living in the bits validator. Uh, I'm saying that because in the connector mapper, I'm like lead developer, I'm still using it. And like depending on the bits validator that is even not going to the derivatives, but the pi bits is, I ah, know that's pi bits actually, that is still able to carry the Atlas keyword. So there is you know, still some trace of the Atlas keyword somewhere in bits, but then in the discussion everywhere, there is no trace of it. Um, so it, it, unfortunately, you know, Oscar and Chris, I don't think Oscar's here and Chris had to drop off. Um, I know Oscar's been thinking about these issues in the context of template flow and, you know, they may kind of, you know, come up against the, um, you know, the, the transforms standard. I would, um, it, it would be worth kind of, you know, pinging him and seeing sort of where this stands. And, it, and then if you had, you know, thoughts about how to, how to help get that going forward, it'd be great to, to get you involved. That's mm -hmm. Oscar Esteban. Yeah, so, so actually I, uh, Oscar is like uh, close to my lab now because I'm in Lausanne and he's Lausanne now. Uh, so definitely we can talk together and push it, pushing it back if we really need it. Uh, yeah, because I'm also aware that I'm just putting in the Atlas, but it will be more like something like this, I think you are mentioning with the uh, template flow. Huh? But so then is like, you know, when you get this Atlas itself, then for instance, when you co-register to the Natty space on an individual, then it just to keep track from which Atlas it was coming from. Uh, because now we have more and more like different resolution of the Atlases, you have more and more regions. So it can be very interesting, like, you know, getting output of different Atlases. Yeah, and that's exactly the use case for template flow, mm -hmm. or at least one mm -hmm. of them. Yeah. So thank you. And Arno has a, a new a new blue hand. Do you want to ask your question? Uh, so um, this is more yeah, this is more uh, also about open neuro and actually the type of bits that is it that people generate. Uh, we were reprocessing all the bits, e.g. data sets and 25% were not of the data set available on Open Neuro. We couldn't do anything with them because people overuse the ignore field. So you just put whatever data you put ignore and then it just passed the validator. So yeah, I was just wondering if there was any, I mean, it's a delicate political question because you don't want to remove data from Open Neuro, you know, decrease your number of posted data sets. But I was just wondering, yeah, if there was any plan to try to you know prevent in some way people from doing that or not 
Um, I speaking for myself, I, you know, I generally like to the philosophy of, you know, asking for forgiveness rather than permission. And so, you know, I think our, you know, our general philosophy has been if it passes the bids validator, then we'll take it. And, you know, if, if there turn out to be issues with it, then that's something that can be raised with the uh, with the data owner. But it, I mean, it does speak to the fact that the bids validator, you know, might we might want it to be, you know, more stringent in some ways. But um, but that's a that's a, a separate question. We have had discussions in the past about um, about the bids ignore file and about some data sets making very extensive use of it to get through the validator and. Um, Sometimes it has been a problem. And as you mentioned, you have stumbled across some of them. And just now I'm trying to find the discussion thread because there have been at least one or two. So I'll post that in the chat once I find it. Thank you, thanks. Maybe one of the things that I can mention and, uh, and where we would like feedback, um, we are currently uh, or in co collaboration with the European uh, Open Oral Pet Project, we're adding some features to Open Oral. And the question was also if there should be a kind of a thumbs up, thumbs down feature for a data set. So uh, maybe we'd like to hear, uh, Arno, would that be a good thing? Because then you could actually give feedback to a data set and you could as a user basically leave a star rating and say, hey, it got all kinds of stuff missing. This is not really usable. Would this be useful or would this just be a... Yeah, and so, I mean, actually with, with Russ, we've uh, published a paper in IEEE on EEG and some the metadata where we developed some quality metric for bids, you know, whether you had the ribbon file, instructions, this, that. And so we're, yeah, we're also working in that direction. We would like to see effort by other groups, you know, so we can, yeah, cross talk. Yeah, and this was simply on the, on I would say the, this the 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 web interface side right like should there be something implemented for user feedback to 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 even make it easier in a search once you search for data sets i want to have only the ones that have very good ratings so to say would that be even useful or not yeah and so I, that's actually part of our project with rust is that we have this uh, open neuro for eg which we call nemar that's going to have some of these for EG specifically, but you'll be able to see on the web, okay, this data set, you know, it is bits compliant, but it's also has the quality metrics that tells you, okay, you have the instruction, you have the readme file, you have this, you have that, etc. Doctor, you're up. Okay, great. I just wanted to quickly add to that uh, discussion that I think there's a conversation going on about overlay of information on top of bids. And this could be quality information, this could be, and that might provide the kind of mechanism that Arno is looking for uh, and would allow community contributions of all kinds of extensions on top of data sets. So I just wanted to bring it up. There is, I think, some early threads and starts of that conversation. And I think Chris was one of the people talking about it. So maybe Chris will get a whole lot of emails after this meeting, but uh, that might be a place to start. Thanks. Thank you so much to everyone who has asked questions. Um, we're, still, we're still here. If you want to type a question, you can still type a question. If you want to raise your blue hand, then we can, we can magically um, promote you up. Is there anything that any of the steering committee, um, steering group folks want to want to add? Russ, Gabriel. Um, I, I just want to point out, I, I can't even remember how many years ago it was. I guess it was like three years, you know, we had the meeting right in the wake. Was it three years ago that Chris Gorgoleski left and we had to figure out like, you know, what was going to happen and everybody was worried that the whole thing was going to implode. And it's, you know, it's just really amazing how 
you know, far from imploding, it's like taken off even more than we would have ever thought. And so I just want to congratulate everybody for, uh, you know, the really hard work and, uh, and, you know, and hopefully you can all bask in the, the success of, of what that work has brought us. And, you know, I, I'll also add, you know, I, I get asked to go talk to people in other areas of science about data sharing, because, you know, we're kind of actually a success story. And it's, it's like, this is probably one of the most successful of these kinds of things anywhere. And that's, again, because of like, you know, everybody who's out there in the room. So, uh, so thanks. Strong agree, strong agree. It's lovely to see so many people here. Um, anyone else on the click you want to, anything that they want to share? Um, oh, uh, JD, did you want to ask a question? Yeah, here we go. Hello, hi everybody, my name is Shadi. Um, just coming in, jumping into the conversation, um, uh, to get some feedback on some work I've been doing, looking at adding a decentralized identifier to the bid spec as part of the data collection pipeline uh, and considering the utility of a digital consent form with that could be embedded into the actual data sets. Um, and yeah, and I would just like to know, does this seem interesting to people who have been working with bids for quite a while and maybe a variety of contexts. And this would really kind of leverage public private key cryptography, which isn't always a user-friendly toolkit. Um, and although it's used behind the scenes and that's a lot of things. So I'd just love to get some feedback and uh, if you're interested in discussing more with we'll us to chat off that too. Is there, um, where, where would, I guess I'm sort of thinking about like looking at Stefan, I think, and maybe Franklin, where, where's the best place to sort of put that to kind of have that discussion so around, um, around it? Is there, where's a sensible place to kind of have that, have that conversation? I'm sorry, uh, I was just typing, uh, typing another answer. So maybe Franklin, did you hear the question? So it, it's sort of a, like, I, if anyone on the steering committee wants to wants to sort of um, give feedback, but I, I, it feels, the question from Shadi feels like it's it's best, it's it's a better medium for like a sort of more engaged, like long-term kind of, not long-term, that's too dramatic, but you know, not like in this next sort of two or three minutes kind of kind of thing. And so I'm just wondering where where's the best place to sort of put that for discussion um, so that there's a, there's a, there's a conversation to be had around it. Is an email to the maintainers a good sort of jumping off point? Or I, I'd be I mean. tempted to suggest uh, opening an issue, describing sort of what you're going for. Uh, and so that we can, well, first of all, because if you send an email to the maintainers, we'll be lost in the ether, right? Whereas, uh, and even just the maintainers, we're not, ex as I was saying, we're not we don't know it all right so we might have other people in the, in the community who might know better or might have more better more expertise on that thing so definitely open an issue will give it at least more visibility and for us also it's easier to know that this thing is there so when we hear about it again we we can refer to it more easily so i'd be i'd say that's that's the start and then and then maybe then we can just like definitely come like have an actual like live chat uh in person like this to just higher on the details, but I would say just definitely start with an issue. Thank you. I wanted to double check on that, but just in case the issues were, were narrowly defined, but that's great. So the answer is no, put them up there and then, <laughs> and then Stefan will fill next year's uh, chat with lots and lots of links to all these different issues as are being populated, populated right now. Um, I really like this um, intended or associated empty room and spatial references fields. Stefan, do you want to say anything about that? Or do you want to just sort of leave it, leave it in the chat for six weeks? I think it can stay there. Uh, I know there are some, there are lots of people who have used these fields and they've had problems. So 
they will the people who are who should be concerned about this i think they will know about this as soon as they read the text the yeah great so that's so if you if you have recognition energy on on any of those terms and they they raise up your antibodies then um then have a look have a look at that work that sounds that sounds really awesome um yeah that's a what, good way to put it <laughs> i've been doing a lot of uh covid work in the last sort of 18 months and uh well 17 months however long covid's been in existence i suppose and um yeah, raising antibodies <laughs> comes up. It comes up a lot. Are there any other questions or comments that anyone wants to wants to make? I kind of um, just on this point about like how do you get feedback? I want to just kind of the the issues and the discussions can feel really overwhelming, but I do want to reiterate what all of the maintainers said, which is that there is no one maintainer to rule them all. There, there isn't anyone who knows absolutely everything and that's not a prerequisite that, so therefore it could not possibly be a prerequisite to, to have someone come along and join in. So it's, um, you know, just being able to come along and have a look, have a look through the issues, have a look to see if some of them are old and out of date. It, one, one way that people can really contribute is by actually summarizing discussions. That's like one of the hardest cognitive loads um, out there and so if you do a lot of work to read a great big long um, issue thread if you if you write a little summary <laughs> of that uh, that's an extraordinarily helpful contribution and we'd really encourage you to make those those sorts of support um because that that is the work of being a maintainer but it's you're already kind of you'd already be in there if you you've done that um, actually, just to just follow up slightly on this uh, and regarding Giacomo's point on TMS uh, and its brain stimulation in general, that's another example of something that could just go in an issue. If you're unclear about how to go about this, I'm very happy to like have a chat and we can iron out what should go in the issue or you can explain the problem and we can sort of like write the issue together. So yeah, uh, very happy to just talk with you to just um, get that one on the uh on the github repository uh as a like also because if you have troubles if you want if you wanted to use bits to organize your tms data and you have had troubles i suspect you're not the only one who's tried that so definitely by putting it out there people know it gives more visibility to the to the to the problem and others can maybe chime in as well thank you very much Rem. questions yeah i think i think i'm like a little bit tempted to, to wind us down there's a it's just day one of ohbm there's a lot more there's a lot more online spaces that you can that you can spend time spend time in um so i'm glad really glad that we recorded this like excellent to uh, the folks in the chat who who caught that and uh, so we'll make this available and um just i guess i'll just i'll just finish up by saying like Thank you again to um, thank you to my fellow steering group members. Uh, spectacular work through the year. It's always a real joy to spend time with you all. Um, huge, huge thank you to the maintainers, as I sort of cannot emphasize more strongly. <laughs> they are the, the sort of doing just the most amazing amounts of work. Um, the, you saw, and we'll, I think we've shared the slide deck, the slide deck already, but all of the, the Beth extensions are also available online. And we've just, that community of people who are taking forward, like what, what bids needs to be in order to be useful, exceptional amounts of work, really, really amazing there. And then just building on what Russ said, like actually the reason that bids is a success is because of how the wonderful community. So there's sort of various different representatives and faces on the screen here. But just to like finish on like a super cheesy note, this is you folks, like thanks. And really, but it it means sort of, it's really, it makes me really proud to be involved in something that is so, so valuable and sort of so undervalued until it's there. And then it's completely sort of transformative across all of the brain imaging ecosystem. So thanks everyone so, so much. Um, anyone want to add anything? Should we, should we do our like, we can just okay. okay. all thumbs okay. up and <laughs> cross hands and be very happy. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.
Have a great OHVM. Enjoy. Bye bye. Ciao everyone. Bye bye.